Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are joining us from around the world. Uh, thank you for those of you who are joining us. Again, as I uh, have been saying, thank you so much for those who have been tuning in uh, to this program. Uh, we are grateful, by the way, for the time that you commit uh, to this program and for your uh, dedication to it. Uh, we, are, we don't take it for granted that uh, you take your time uh, to come and join us so that we, as people of South Sudan, can share ideas about the situation that is going on in our country, the Republic of South Sudan. So thank you, uh, those of you who are tuning in. My apologies that we have delayed a bit, uh, 19 minutes now, past uh, uh, 6 p.m. in Juba. Um, we had a bit of technical uh, difficulties, uh, but uh, no worries. We were able to resolve them uh, very quickly, and uh, here we are now. Uh, so once again, thank you, those of you who are joining us. Uh, these are very difficult times for the people of South Sudan, and they are also uh, very important times for us as people of South Sudan to engage in conversation uh, about what is happening in our country. Uh, many of these things that we are talking about are not new. Uh, we have seen them with our own eyes over the last uh, 19 years of uh, Salva Kiir uh, regime. Uh, we have been watching with shock as the country is divided, as citizens of South Sudan are massacred, and as the entire economy of the country is run to the ground. Uh, this has been horrific uh, for everyone. Uh, and we as a people, uh, we have reached really the limit. Uh, we can no longer endure uh, what is happening in our country. Uh, we have tolerated this regime uh, for so long. People have appealed to Salva Kiir uh, that he has done enough and that he should retire. Uh, the last appeal, as you know very well, was the National Dialogue, where all the people of South Sudan spoke over a number of years. And they came up with a recommendation that President Kiir, you and Dr. Riyak Machar, it's time for you guys to go home and relax and allow different people to take the country forward. Uh, but, you know, they refuse, and uh, Salva Kiir uh, obviously refused. And uh, he wants to remain in power. He wants to rule until he dies. Uh, that is the reality. And we, as people of South Sudan, uh, we cannot accept that. It's not simply because we don't want him in the position of the presidency. It's because he is hopelessly incompetent. And he has failed over and over again uh, to provide a vision and a direction where the country is going. And uh, the result of his failure has been catastrophe for the people of South Sudan. Catastrophe in terms of lives that have been lost, either through communal violence uh, or through hunger, disease, uh, and through unknown gunmen, uh, and also in terms of the economic uh, crisis that the country has faced, lack of development. Uh, as you've seen over the years, as Savaki remained in power, uh, people of South Sudan remain to suffer, and uh, the economy is doing very bad. Uh, poverty is going up. As you know very well, poverty was only 50% at independence. Now it's almost 90% of the entire population. Uh, this is horrific, absolutely horrific. Uh, and every other indicator, whether it's political indicator, social indicators, if you look at the maternal mortality rate, it is going up. If you look at the infant mortality rate, it's going up. Every single indicator is going in the wrong direction. And then insecurity around the country is spreading. It has reached the point where Salva Kiir now is actually relying on foreign mercenaries to protect himself because he has failed to build a formidable army in South Sudan, he inherited a formidable army in the, in the form of the SPLA, and then he destroyed it, completely destroyed it. And now he has to rely on Museveni in Uganda to protect him, which is shameful that the people of South Sudan, a sovereign nation, has to rely on a foreign country to provide security and to provide protection. Uh, this is the extent to which uh, this country has been destroyed. Uh, so we have to talk, and I'm glad that many of you are coming in uh, to uh, join these conversations so that we really analyze what has gone on in our country. Uh, so this is the, the, the whole point. I want to encourage those of you who have joined us to begin by sharing the video because we want as many South Sudanese as possible to be engaged in this conversation. We want it to be participatory. Uh, those of you who are tuning in, we don't want you to just to consume what I'm saying. Also speak. And there are a number of people that have been making their own live videos. Uh, they are speaking. This is wonderful. This is what we are trying to encourage. We are trying to engender a conversation. 
So those of you who are making video, whether you are for us, you are against us, you are matograp, or you are a patriot, that is fine. We encourage you to have your voice be heard. So please share the video. Let everyone be involved. Whether you agree with us or not, share it so that other people who agree with you would also see your point of view. And, 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 and everyone, we are encouraging you to also engage on comments. Uh, make your comments known. Uh, I read, by the way, every single comment. Uh, whenever I finish the show, I come back and I go through every single comment and I read them. So please make sure your comments uh, are there. And I learn a lot, by the way, from your comment. Many of you provide feedback. Many of you provide a different point of view. And this is what we want. We want a conversation to continue. So please share the video. Before we uh, begin our program today, and today we are really going to focus on Tim Edwards' uh, book, uh, A Bloody Nile. We are going to look at chapter 1 to chapter 6. But before we go into that, I want to bring your attention to an incident that happened today in Juba. As those of you know, and I posted a video earlier, today, wounded heroes of South Sudan, these are men and women that have lost limbs, they have lost legs, they have lost hands, they have lost parts of their body. These are people that are mortally wounded. They went to the Ministry of Finance to ask for their salaries. They have not received their salaries since July. And as you know very well, the inflation is going up in the country. The currency is losing value because the money is being stolen. Money is being stolen. It, oil is flowing. Right? Let, let them not create like a, 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 a fake news that oil is not flowing. Oil is flowing. And the money is coming in. And the money is being given to Bolmil and some of the cronies around Salvakir. The money is brought back to Salvakir in the evening. And then he put it in his pockets. And then now we decide who to give the money to. The people he has forgotten here are the people of South Sudan, including the wounded heroes. These are the people that lost uh, parts of their bodies in the liberation struggle for South Sudan. Some of these wounded heroes are people, by the way, who lost their limbs protecting Kir in power. And we are going to go through, especially in this Tim Edwards book, about the so-called final solution that he hatched back in 2013, where he instigated a civil war in South Sudan, used a lot of young men, Matyanganyor, who were recruited predominantly from Bargazal, mostly Dinka, and he used them to commit a near genocide on the Nuer people in Juba. And what he did was essentially to turn the people of South Sudan against each other so that these people will kill themselves. That is what he did. This is the reality. There is nothing we can do to run away from that truth. So. Today, those people went to the Ministry of Finance and they were asking for their money. And they were doing a peaceful, peaceful protest. Peaceful protest. We are talking about holding election in December. And, you know, they've been saying for many years now that they don't have rubber bullets, they don't have tear gas, all they have is live bullet. Well, today they proved that because they were not just shooting at regular civilians. They were shooting at men and women who have lost parts of their body in the liberation and struggle of South Sudan. People who have lost part of their body to keep Salvakir in power. And this is why I keep saying, my people, no matter what you do for this regime, they will go and mobilize you using Dinka, using Bargazalism, using Gogrialism or Warapism, that this is our government. And you suffer, you lose a part of your leg, you lose part of your hand, you are shot in the chest, you are shot, shot wherever. And then now they can't even give you what is rightfully yours, your basic salary. We're not even talking about health care. We're not talking about any other benefits. We're just talking about basic salary that is supposed to be entitled to them. Kiri is refusing to give you that. And then he's using your other brothers that have now remained in the military and the police to shoot at you. This is the kind of regime that we have. This is the guy that is in power. It's a guy who does not even understand when you do something good for him, for his government, he doesn't understand it completely. He just come out with vindiction, he come out with brutality. And that is what we saw today with those brothers. They were met with brutality, they were shot, they were humiliated. Imagine if you are someone who have lost close friends, brothers in armed struggle, and you have lost your leg, and you came to the Ministry of Finance today to ask for your basic salaries, only to be met with bullets. 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 Is Kir Mayadi the only one with bullets? Salva Kir, is he the only one with the bullets? 
This is the question that everyone should be asking. And I've been telling you, the people of South Sudan, this is a regime that is brutal, a regime that does not care whatsoever, a regime that has no agenda. Even now, because they have realized that they're losing the control of the army, you know what he's planning? And this is, by the way, why some of the borders have been allowed to be annexed by Uganda. He's, he's planning to bring in UPDF to come and protect him because he knows people of South Sudan has lost confidence in him. And I've been telling you, this man is a foreign agent, and you don't understand. He's the one that turned around and accused other people of being foreign agent. He's a foreign agent. And he has been a foreign agent for Sudan, for uh, Khartoum, and now he's a foreign agent for Uganda. And that is why he cannot even honor the men and women that has made sacrifice for South Sudan to be an independent country today, for his own government to remain in power. Because remember in 2013 and 2015, Dr. Rihak would have taken over Juba without those, and those men and women that he was shooting at today who sacrificed themselves, who were wounded. Without them, Kir would not be in power. He doesn't ever remember that. He doesn't ever remember that. He will shoot at them. Why? Because he rather steal the money than give it to them, what is rightfully theirs, instead of giving you what is yours, that you deserve. You, no one is begging him. No one is going to go to his house and say, uh, Mr. President, give me some money. No. This is what you are entitled by law. And there is a budget that has been passed by the parliament that says this money belongs to these people. These people are just simply coming to collect what is theirs. In the state, they're being shot at. That is the guy that has been running the country. And you can no longer wonder why this country is going where it is going. And I keep telling you, there is no possibility whatsoever that South Sudan can begin to address enormous challenges that we face without first removing Kir, removing Kir, wrecking this regime that is in power. And that is our simple duty as people of South Sudan. And that is the simple objective of this program, is to make sure you truly understand the face of Salva Kiir regime. That this regime is a regime that is brutal, is a regime that is corrupt, is a regime that is godless, is a regime that is full of evil deeds. And we are going to go through those. So I just wanted to say that. And I want to, to say to our wounded heroes, and I want to say to all the men in the uniform that you people, you have tolerated this for so long. You have allowed this man to basically enslave all the people of South Sudan. I tell you, no more. We can no longer allow this to continue. It's time that we take our country back. It's a time that we restore our dignity and make sure that this country can be a nation where people are happy once again. We need your help. And we are all the people of South Sudan. We want to come together to make sure we finish this problem. We cannot do it without you. We need you to think about the nation. The nation is much more important than one individual called Salva Kiir. This individual, whether people like it or not, time will come for him to die. He will leave this earth and the nation of South Sudan will continue. So please, my people, let's make sure we are united and this kind of humiliation as what has happened today to the wounded heroes shall never happen ever, ever again. Thank you very much. Now, we are going to go into the book. I know you have been waiting for us to go through it chapter by chapter and to go through it through uh, and read certain passages from it. Uh, as I was talking, you know, sometimes I talk uh, in English fully and then I will revert back into Dinka. But today, because since we are reading the book, I'm going to be mixing the two languages simultaneously. So just bear with me. I know there are a lot of people that are non-Dinka that are watching this show. But I keep insisting on speaking in Dinka because majority of people that still support that regime, including the people that were shooting the gunshots earlier, these people are Dinka. And unless they truly understand what is going on, they've been brainwashed that without Salva Kiir in South Sudan, that they will suffer, that they will be killed. This is the nonsense that Salva Kiir regime has been peddling into their heads. And we have to make sure that these people are fully informed, that they understand that they, nobody is coming against, is, 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 is coming against them. Uh, so please, uh, I agree. Uh, I agree with you uh, that you all, uh, I know this is a national uh, program, but we have to also make sure that we engage in this.
we engage the Dinka people and we make sure that they truly understand. So thank you very much. Now, if you go back to the book, we start with chapter one. Chapter one, this is uh, what is called the final solution, the plan. Uh, this is the plan that uh, was, uh, was hatched by President Keir with some of his key henchmen. Uh, so this is, if you go, as we crawl down, those of you with the book, uh, this is actually uh, page eight. This is where the real, uh, uh, the real uh, text begins. I'm going to read the first paragraph, and then I will explain a little bit, and I will scroll down uh, to some of the to two other uh, paragraphs in this chapter. Then we will analyze it, and then we will go on. So the first paragraph start the plan, Kristen, the final solution, and designed to rid the South Sudanese political scene of opposition to incumbent President Salva Kiir Mayadid was as simple as it was unimaginative. Simulate a military insurrection that would then be baptized as a coup, get the privately recruited tribal army of President Salva Kiir that had been purposefully trained by General Paul Malonga I to purge the Nuer and any other people who sided with them. Then arrest all the politicians who had raised dissenting voices toward and challenge the president. Uh, this was basically, this, this, so remember that, that is the first, uh, the first uh, paragraph of the book. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, you get a sense of who these people are. But let, let's go to uh, second page, page nine, uh, and then uh, the second paragraph uh, of, that, of, that, of that page. Uh, it said, the plan was to, rid, was to get rid of Riek Machar, Pagana Mum, and Rebecca Nyandeng in particular former Garang boys who had never warmed up to Salva Kiir and other prominent politicians who had sided with them in general from the South Sudanese political scene decisively. Right? So you know now what, who, who were the target, the objectives of what was going to be done. Right? So uh, that is basically what happened. And then if you go down to the, sec uh, the third to the last uh, paragraph, I will read these two paragraphs, I mean these three paragraphs entirely, because that is the end of chapter one. It say, on the, on the night of D-Day, 15 December 2013, with the fake coup success successfully simulated at the Gieda military barracks at a prearranged signal, civilian youth in Juba from President Warab home state and Northern Baragazal were summoned and armed. Weapons, ammunition, uniforms were distributed in the dead of the night, as the Dutkubeng, the President's private army, were simultaneously deployed. The three M's, military, money, and media, were now in place. Military in the form of Dutkubeng and elements of the Presidential Guard and the national security. Money appropriated from the national coffers and state-owned media to announce the failed coup bid. On the morning of the December 16, 2013, after a whole night of shooting, the now scared people of Juba City woke up to a camouflage clad President, Kier, Salva Kier, President Salva Kiir announcing that there had been a coup attempt by Riek Machar that had been failed and contained. He went ahead to announce a dust to dawn curfew. It was to be the signal that is spark of the program against the Nuer in particular and other unfortunate people in Juba generally. That morning and for the next few days, Nuer soldiers, civilians, youth, women, and children were slaughtered arbitrarily. Another curse was about to be unleashed upon a land that has been bedeviled by war and worse than war. This, my people, is how the book begins. This is basically the first chapter of the book. Uh, it talks about the plan. Uh, you know very well this plan. It, there was a recruitment of soldiers. Uh, particularly from uh, the, the states of Bargazal. They were trained by Paul Malung in uh, northern Bargazal without the knowledge of the chief of general staff at the time, uh, General James Hothmai. And then they were brought to Juba. And then this thing was simulated. A fake coup was created. And then the fake coup was used as a pretext to go door to door to slaughter uh, innocent women and children and uh, to basically divide the country and unleash a vicious level of violence uh, that has since uh, uh, destroy the nation. Uh, the objective was very simple. It was basically to keep Kiir in power 
and to basically uh, make sure that they break the back of what they see then as the opposition to his regime, which was Dr. Riyak Machar and the supporters that supported him that came predominantly from Nuer. Uh, the violence and the savageness of the violence uh, did not know any bounds. Women, children, uh, and uh, infants were killed. I remember that day after uh, I was in Juba, and uh, my wife and child were in the house, uh, and the fighting happened in Gieda, which is near my family home. And the next day I had to come, uh, but already it was difficult. The roads were, bl were blocked, and my wife was taken to uh, her father's house. So I came to Jemezhu's house uh, in Amarat. When I came there, what I saw with my own eyes was brutal. It was difficult to describe. Uh, women, children that had been shot, that had been wounded, they were just on the, on the, on the, on the, on, in the compound. Uh, people were dying. Uh, even a child that was probably like a few days old uh, was just crying because the mother had been killed and the baby was left now as an orphan. Uh, it was a brutal scene. And in fact, it was from that day that I decided to become an activist because I never imagined uh, that uh, such a brutality uh, could be inflicted, uh, inflicted upon other South Sudanese by their fellow South Sudanese. And here, innocent people uh, were killed, even those who did the killing majority of them, uh, they were young, and they did not even know uh, what they were doing. They were basically brainwashed, they were used. Uh, people of South Sudan were turned against each other. Uh, this is basically the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of the violence. Uh, in 2013, the final solution uh, solution I care be kill my added be your head at two jig. Get your honor wouldn't be a jam. Bukoi one, a jam a quarter bind, the man in e dictoria, Ipagana mum, Ima Marabega, Buck a bietto, supporters can the key, look a support, a buck a my, buck a knock a cage, a taban, jay jay train went there, gen to Kurban, mostly from regions Gabar Gazal, a look a train in in northern Bargazal by Paul Malong. Uh, be cake juba. Boko take a uniform, take a dang. Uh, could you will cook a jaraloi, cook a cake pit? A cake loi, uh, can be by big a cake. Would you call a jagger jalo, uh, by by toko ben? I love one, could like a one, be quite knock. They are, could meet, would you meet the cake, the cake, uh, knack a cake. Uh, and Angie Bello, uh, call on a yum sister, but she tongue jarum. And you belong upon the same day upon the Jemisud. Catch a betting onion echo like a chabacha kind of compoundage. Coach a comoy, they are meat. He meant in a page deed, mana geno, who made a jet yaw, chincha, quachin kaloyato. Eke eke yunum coach 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 James Louis Tamo, Luel Cabadil Marcana Coiken, Chan Key and Ware. In a Kilo road. So a cooler, in a cool chee by in Chen Law, Rechich, Chen a musical at Jerogol. In a tea, Yen Ran, H. All, Tim Edward, Yen Bunga, Yen a Galden, a Golden, a Kaka. So that is what happened, my people. This is basically uh, the, 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 the beginning. Now, Chapter 2 actually describes the actual massacres that happened, uh, how they were organized, and every single one that was involved, how the division of Juba happened, and how the command was happening within Juba, and they were literally going door to door uh, to, uh, to kill these people, uh, to attack uh, people, and to uh, make sure that there is this, uh, uh, that they achieve their objectives. Uh, so, uh, this chapter is very hard uh, to read uh, because you read in this chapter really the brutality of the killing itself. Uh, the, if you look, there are mentioning of the names of the individuals uh, who were commanding uh, different groups. There are a number of different individuals that have gone house to house to kill. But uh, there is a very important uh, quote that I need to bring up here. Uh, this is on the page 10. Uh, if you go to page 10 of the book, uh, there is a chapter there. And, and, and the reason why I want to bring this up 
is not to blame any individuals, whether these people come uh, from any regions of South Sudan. As I said, a lot of young men uh, from Bahar Ghazal was, were misused. A lot of Matyanganyor, they didn't even know what was happening. But the, their mind was pumped with tribal hatred uh, so that these people will go and commit heinous crime. Uh, they were pressured by some of their generals uh, to feel like this is the only way in which they can prove their manhood. Uh, and, and, and that could happen by them killing innocent Nuer uh, women and children. Uh, so that is the reality of, uh, of, uh, of the situation. Uh, so my people, uh, uh, I want to read this uh, chapter. It, it tells you exactly what was being said to these young men, what made them so brutal and so bloodthirsty. Uh, I want to read it to you. Uh, this is the last paragraph on page 10. It start. It say, also on the morning of the uh, 16 December, after weapons were distributed to civilian youth from the president's home region, they were addressed by generals Grang Mabil and Bola Kut. Joram Bola Kut told them in no uncertain term that they were the future leaders of this country and that they had missed out on the first war. So this was their time to prove themselves. And here is the direct quote from Bola Kut. You have to prove yourselves from today and kill the enemy once and for all. Many of you were not bloodied and were enjoying life in Kenya, Uganda, and in the Western diaspora. Now we are threatened and we the all are going to hand this power to you when we leave so that you have to learn how to protect it. So basically here, these young men that have been out of the country and these young men that were uh, coming from different parts who have never really committed any terrible crimes were being told that you are the leaders and now this is the time to prove yourself and to kill the enemy. And in that particular time, the enemy, according to this group that were planning this violence, has been defined as the Nuer. So they are going to kill and they are told to be very brutal so that they kill as many as possible. This is basically uh, what is happening. So here you have innocent people, young men that had no idea, but they're listening to their elders. Yeah? And this is a country where you know, now they accuse me that I insult the elders, that I don't listen to the elders. Elders that are telling you to go and kill your fellow citizen. Elders that are telling you to go and kill women and children. This is it. Uh, especially from where up, uh, mostly in the Greek. I think that you are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be able to do it. You are going to be to do it. You are going to be now, in the Tadun, we were in Uganda, we were in Kenya, we were in the West. We were cool, and we were in the West. 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 We So, Shabamthin win. Most of them are in the West. They 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 are in uh, so, when most of them are innocent uh, people, they have been from somewhere. 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 They have door from somewhere. I did a polten. A jalo can I take it? Nung to jam magatain. I didn't come jack went and carajare. Nayera and a, 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 a win core book, Lazam is love, Bagudu Jolo Queen, especially uh, page eleven at ten. 
nang e karaja red ka won chale ba ka kwen ko ja moy ga peng koy lo yunumis ko ja moy ga peng agutti koy one of the thing to buko je dana era ne chon ma gang ma gong rundial ma gong rundial ta e nga e speaker ko pande che ne benten speaker e speaker buko e blue headed to buy buko e lwel ka nake ke koy to buy so eh alwel ye bendi da kuma yena li wato hotel lon koy ben bay ko ko to bay ben be ga no cha ni ganwar one of the members of parliament ku member of parliament a chen yo ni tu en wan wan chan jam gol ne bunga nga ci rob ga her pen ku lu la e la de mbaka ko no e baka ko no then ba wo pol ba ga koy ke ba ga nak pen ku jo ke yop jo ima gong rundial jo ke yop a yin wen mo njuel jo ke no gu ni wer ci do nga kuma ya ci wer pen le ko la wede yen wer to kana kuma wala wer liu kana kuma ga nak one of the people jacob enok rane cho red wako e wene e wene man na jema zot ku jema zot nga chief of general staff ci be lom ku nak ci nwer ko ko won ci ka nok juba ko ya e ga jor la o lere ke wut te e chon manga ten ku je tu wor je ta to ga wer nyen branto wor ban be jam moy pe branto wor ban be joto bu ko jot ke ku lere ke wop ke na e la ku ta ban cha rana ci ko ci bi a tor wore e ga jwar wore ke bi fo ke na ran jwar wore aye aye ne kato yej bay bay be chin ku yaj ku go yok be ka tem bay ku ye go ben je lom ku je twa dore bi crocodile bi kato di wir bi jo bi jo la cham bi nga ko lor ke na je manom ku ye rang em wej rang di tok ku kur ka tin ku tie ke en ke en ke lo ro re ta ku ka kene lui plan ku lui plan be chana lu le kier be jare re ba nyech chan be re ba nyech be ko ye woni ka ting ke political enemies ka kier beka nok bu jinu bin beka tuom nim bu jieng bi ka ban ku wel ke kana kuma da wo bo bu ku ra ne chol kir ma ya det bu ku bo bu ku bu ku bo bu ku bu gel bu ku ba inde bu ku gel en ga ke en ga ke jira lo e ka ku je ko lo do 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 a lo wona lo ku na ko ch lo ko je wona ku na ko ch lo ko je wona ku na ko ch a ka ra ja ret a je ke ku ene ten ka ci ka lo e a je ka piat a ka wen ine chwe yo kene kraj tung de ke rane cho lwal marolit en to mene ko le ke yen muk taiga ta ato mak tam ba nyech ay one of the iran when it here in the security bank so ko ci beloy taban on riasa ba nyen ngay nwer go mit ga nwer ke to riasa e jaban go ko lomu kur ga ni mu tew ga wot e jey wan ki ra to wona ko wona ga chene mit ga nwer e chene ka laten ko lo ko je koy ke cha ne ke jes ke ke nwer ko ka re ra ko me ke ke nwer bas jor ke lo ko tew ga wor ko na ke ke mo ke ni mo tok tok ban bo ko mo ni pe ko ke tal ma re lo al ma ro lit ye nga ra re re ko le ke mo taiga ka ke ban we ba a che ka chi tim edward ke ke lwel ye na to ko che ye lwel ke a chi tim edward a che ke god ko na era ndel ke ke de be report on gera bo sanjo president abu sanjo a che ka ke ban a che ke god we ba so e ka jero loy to switch back to the english uh, basically i was describing here uh, some of the massacres that happened after all that young people have been pumped up and they have been uh, brainwashed and they are told now that these are their enemies and they must be merciless and they will go and kill every single one of them uh, what happened now uh, is that they began doing that uh, and one of the places where they attack is actually the house of the speaker magong rundia Uh, they wanted to kill everyone there including uh, young people that were hiding in the house uh, what actually saved those people was because one of the members of parliament a woman uh, came out and she said i'm not going to allow you to kill them if you want to kill them you have to kill me first and uh, she stood her ground uh, in fact this woman of parliament actually called me uh, a few days ago uh, to provide even more details to the to to what actually happened and uh, we are very grateful to people like that because without them there can be no nation uh, this nation is a bond that is created by individuals and every single one of them have a role to play in preserving uh, the nation of south sudan uh, instead of allowing those social bond to be destroyed simply because a greedy politician uh, want to remain in power forever uh, so that is what happened but the killing happened all over it, it didn't matter whether you were in a government or you were not Uh, in fact uh, my father in law uh, has a brother of his uh, ratu wako uh, he was uh, killed uh, he was killed with other young men that were all in his house uh, they were killed 
And for no other reason other than the fact that they were nowhere. Uh, they were basically killed. There was a place in Mangaten, you will read there in the book, where people were taken, they were put inside uh, a cell, and then the soldiers from outside will shoot at them. Some people were suffocating, uh, and they will just mow down everybody. People were killed, they were running to Yunmis. You remember in 2013, all of these are things that many of you witnessed with your own eyes. Uh, so uh, we've seen these, uh, some of these things, and the brutality uh, that was exhibited and was shown uh, that particular day. It was absolutely tragic. Uh, there is, if you go in page 12, uh, from uh, the middle of the page, uh, there's a story there about, uh, about, uh, about uh, Lual Marolit, who is currently the head of the tiger. Uh, at the time, he was in, in charge of the close protection of the president, or President Salva Kiir. So in the unit, uh, I sh actually this is very important, I'm going to read it out. They say, in the house of the supposed fountain of honor, the president, Things were not any better. A senior officer or president close protection bodyguard, Lieutenant Colonel Lual Moroldit, a hitherto jolly and friendly fellow, ordered for the selection and isolation of the Nuer soldiers within his unit. Later, more civilians, including women and children, who lived within the compound that housed the bodyguards and their families were rounded up and locked up with the soldiers who had earlier been arrested. They now amounted to 21 Nuer soldiers from the President Close Protection Unit, and 90 civilians from the neighborhood of the presidential residence in Amarat. They were all killed, including the women and children, execution style, with bullets to the back of their heads, just outside the president's house. You know, and the, the horrible thing as you read this scene is to imagine where is the president around this time? He's in this house. He clearly knows what is happening. Uh, he knows what is happening, and, uh, and, and people are being summarily executed while he's listening, and probably with his orders, with his blessing, because this is a direct uh, plan that he had hatched. Uh, so this is how sad and this is how brutal uh, this is. Uh, this is uh, chapter 2, uh, comrades. Uh, now the rest of you, you can read. You can read the rest, uh, the killing squad, where they have gone, who was commanding which part, uh, where they were going. Uh, all of this is there. Uh, this thing continued for days, for days. Uh, people of South Sudan literally being turned against each other and killing their own brothers uh, and sister. Uh, so that is chapter two. Uh, if you go to chapter three, uh, it really now goes back to the beginning. Uh, it talks about really the title is A Good Seed Exhume. And here, it talks about how basically Salva Kiir became president. And it goes into uh, the death of John Grant and how basically uh, Salva Kiir being the deputy, uh, uh, he was posed to take over when Grant died. And then it also highlighted a much bigger problem. And this problem is actually bigger than Salva Kiir. Uh, and this is the, 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 the problem of uh, lack of institutions uh, in the SPLM how the SPLA, SPLM was not very well organized. And it allowed Salva Kiir to take over. And uh, when he took over uh, with a system that was vacuous, he was able to do with it as he wished. Uh, so this is the, what is discovered here in the book. It's to go back and to provide the background, the kind of conditions that allow uh, for this thing to happen and uh, for Salva Kiir to be able to uh, uh, create such atrocities among the people of South Sudan and turn them against uh, each other. So it goes through the 21 years of the war, uh, basically the, uh, uh, the, 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 how the leadership was not very well structured. Garang, by the way, before he died, uh, if you read from page, uh, 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 the page number is not showing at, after that, uh, but if you read immediately, I think uh, you know, this would be, let me see, uh, yeah, this would be like, the chapter three, uh, the second paragraph from it, you, you, you read that Garang had only basically appointed Kir as the vice president, and then he appointed the command of the army, uh, General Wei Denga Jack as the chief of general staff, and then he has like five deputies who are mentioned there. Uh, these were Isaac Mahmur, uh, Salva Matong Gangdit, Jemesot Mai, uh, Bura Jang Duot. Uh, these were the people that were uh, appointed uh, under him. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, I mean four, four deputies. Uh, the rest of the government was not structured. What Garang had also done was to appoint uh, the older commanders in the SPLM as governors. All of you remember this. These are the things that we remember back in 2005. Uh, and then now, Garang died prematurely, which allowed Salva Kiir to take over. And when Salva Kiir took over, if you remember back in 2004, there was that crisis that was happening in the SPLM uh, between Garang and Kiir. So uh, it kind of reminded us about that and how that basically uh, allow uh, for Kiir to come in and come in not just only with a different style of leadership, but with a vengeance, uh, targeting some people that he has seen as uh, enemies uh, to his leadership, and he began basically targeting them. Uh, so uh, this is a very important chapter, uh, is a part of the background of why uh, we end up with this problem. And this is one of the things that we keep talking about uh, as uh, South Sudanese, the lack of institutions. Uh, institutions are the most important thing. You cannot run a country uh, just by men. Uh, individual cannot just make laws. You have to build systems. And uh, these systems have to have procedures and protocols that they follow. Uh, but we have never had that. Even John Grang, despite all his greatness, uh, did not build institution within the SPLM. And that allowed, when Savakir came over, to have no uh, control whatsoever. Because institutions are what uh, basically prevent leaders from abusing power. Uh, so this is uh, the situation we face now, uh, and this is uh, what we are dealing with. Uh, chapter 4, here we go uh, to the death of John Gara. Uh, and you know it's very important basically to read uh, the first paragraph here. At least we will read that first paragraph, and then we will go on. He said, the single most devastating blow to the SPLM-SPLA that obliterated its cohesion and internal order but perhaps which could have also saved it from itself had there been genuine internal organization was not the lack of an ideology, but the demise of Dr. John Grang in a Ugandan presidential helicopter on 30th July 2005. Grang had just died without forming the government of Southern, Southern Sudan and before nominating the SPLA, SPLM SPLA quota of the government of national unity in Khartoum. His successor, yet to be chosen, was going to have to grapple with forming a functional government. There were no notes or file documents left by the now late John Grang on what, uh, what he had planned for the Sudan, South Sudan, SPLM, SPLA. And all of this of a man who always kept his aces up his sleeves and cards to himself. What was available, the family sh shelf away as personal effects of the late to use later for leveraging themselves in the future as would soon be realized. Uh, this is the, the first paragraph. Uh, basically, there is another interesting paragraph that I need to read here. This is on the actual death of John Grang. This is the last paragraph on the same page. Uh, basically, it says uh, uh, that on the 30th of July 2005, after confirming that John Grang was dead, the press conference was convened at the Nairobi SPLM office in Lavington. A sweating and shaky Salva Kiir, notwithstanding the call, Nairobi is renowned, is renowned for in the month of July and August, came to the podium with crumbled pieces of paper and numbered out what was supposed to amount to a speech announcing and confirming the device of Garang. The venerable SPLM spokesman, Dr. Samson Kwaje, then took over and coherently addressed the local Kenyan and international press in attendance. Many journalists asked the South Sudanese president why Dr. Samson Kwaje was not anointed successor to late Garang because he came out as a statesman, as juxtaposed to the Sheikh Salva Kiir. Uh, so you remember that day when John Garang died? And basically, this is basically what, what hushed Salva Kiir into power. Uh, and then if you go to chapter 5, is basically now Kiir is in power. Uh, and uh, uh, this is where we begin to be told a little bit about who Salva Kiir is as an individual, as a man himself. Uh, and here, uh, we b begin to see some of his own character flows early on. Uh, there is a one paragraph there that I should bring your attention. Uh, this is the, uh, the second to last paragraph. Uh, uh, this, uh, there is on the, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, this is, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, yes. 
there is a in the middle if you read here or you can you can actually begin uh, with the with the main paragraph it's a a good natured drinker who loves his ugandan manufactured uh, pilsner lager and the occasional stray or bottle of whiskey indeed a simple commander salvakir often serve his guests beer at home he also enjoyed playing cards which was most of the time because there was no real work when there was a pause in fighting or oppression. He also had a healthy appetite and renowned pension for young lasses, this is young girls, uh, which he satisfied with great zest. However, most of the commanders were no different in the way they lived back then. Perhaps this inclination to sex was a result of power and the idleness which was prevalent back during the war days. A practicing Roman Catholic, he often went to church on Sundays wearing his hat and a t-shirt tucked into a short uh, Safco jean trousers that left his ankles exposed. He was very thin back then, so he cut a figure of a mannequin in his Sunday best. Indeed, one of the object of his desire and subsequent conquest was a young girl who had led the choir in Ye Catholic Cathedral. He would later make her pregnant. She was not to be the last. Um, so here we begin to understand who is this new guy who is coming in to lead the country after John Grang had died. We know that there are no institutions. There is a much heavy burden uh, to, be, uh, to be filled. Uh, but this is the guy that is coming in. I think it's important that I translate this in, uh, in Dinka. Long to one Grang Ajayoto, Kujakir Joben. I chapter uh, chapter 5 uh, so kuka broad do open your head to na la la book chapter ko we bene a broad do open your to win so ke ko be we nyin tit chan back nge e ke lo road e tung ka chi tim edwards to ke le wo ko tena ku by the way uh, we ko e ko die ya ko book share na iran liu book ne yen ke ya ke share uh, chan bo book be deal yo bra na ben bo book be yo all right moving on to the last chapter of our program today i want to also pay attention to your time so that i don't take all of your time uh, chapter 6. Uh, this is a very Im important chapter uh, because this chapter comes with the ideology of the new regime, uh, the new sheriff in time, uh, in town called Salvakir. Uh, now uh, we have known a little bit about him. Uh, we have, he's unable to articulate his speeches. He's unable to provide any real vision what is going to be the way forward uh, for the country. Uh, but, and then we are also told a bit about his, uh, who he is, he is as a person. He likes playing cards. Uh, he obviously liked uh, to have uh, time with the young ladies. He liked his alcohol, beer, and obviously whiskey. Uh, these are parts that we have already been informed now, so we know 
uh, about these things. Uh, but as we go, uh, here the chapter is talking about the philosophy of the new government, of the new president that is coming in. Uh, this uh, philosophy, it says, our government, our way. And uh, so here uh, you can uh, you can you can you can read uh, the first part uh, it say uh, one of the first major blunders made at the formation of the government of southern sudan that would later horn and plague the country into and after the independence was the appointment of ministers political leaders Without the existence of civil service or technocratic cadre base, ministers were appointed and then mandated to generate ministries out of nothing, apart from the huge budget they were given evidently. So, uh, and here is how the government was, uh, was basically appointed. In this chapter, uh, Tim Edwards uh, talk about the problem of nepotism. A minister will look uh, for uh, people from his clan, from his tribe, most of the time from his village, and these are the people that will be appointed uh, in, the ministry, in the ministry. You will look for some guy, maybe a cousin to be a bodyguard, another one to be a driver, then another one or a, one of his uh, former bodyguards to be uh, office manager. Then you will begin to look, who did he know back in the days? Uh, who did he go to Jama Khartoum with? Or went to Jama Cairo with? Or Jama Juba with? And where is this person? Oh, he's in Australia. Then they call the guy, the guy come, now, all of a sudden, the guy who was working nine to five job in a factory somewhere is back to Juba, he's the undersecretary. Uh, so here, uh, what he's talking about here is the problem of nepotism and how basically, uh, instead of uh, appointing people or allowing a civil service structure in which people were appointed, all of a sudden, it became about appointing your clansmen and putting everyone in the in the in the in the uh, putting everyone in the uh, everyone that you know relative of yours into a payroll uh, so i will read the last uh, last paragraph of this chapter and then uh, we will uh, we will wrap up quickly so here he's talking about how a minister is appointed so then he will say after securing a ministerial house and a vehicle to suit it was back to business of staffing the new ministries all of a sudden there were salaries job in newly created government departments, ranging from director general through directors to office messengers and tea girls. How were they going to fill these positions? Where would the competent people come from? Then one minister visited his colleagues to see how he was doing things at the, his ministry. He realized that all, that all the staff were from the same region, spoke the same language, and had the same tribal scarification on their foreheads. Hell, they were all not only from the same tribe, but from the same village. He was fairly shocked and asked his colleague about it. The colleague will usually reply, yes, it is true, and all our other colleagues are doing the same thing. Why not me? I have to look after my, my people too. Uh, the visiting minister was astounded, but decided to observe the staff in other ministries and was shocked that indeed all the ministries had a, a tribal angle in their staffing. People were given jobs regardless of competency, let alone academic credential. The only qualification was where you came from and who you knew. The notion of the creation of a new country for posterity was thrown out of the window, and the idea of crude accumulation took over. The general and said sentiment was that the CPA was going to collapse or that al-Bashir would renege on the agreement soon enough and war would resume. You will not be left out on this, and it was game on. Nepotism had won the first round against South Sudan. Nepotism, 10. South Sudan, 0. The politics of parochialism, patronage, and hegemony had just officially started. This is how Tim Edwards uh, concludes uh, this chapter. And this is the last of the six chapters that we are going to go through. Basically, it's self-explanatory. Any one of you that visited Juba that time, you know exactly what we are talking about. This was something that we all observe. Uh, it was nepotism at the highest level. Uh, people were literally appointed simply because they came from the same tribe as the minister. Whereby, ki yene kira kir in chitim at well ten, a little one chene minister, sinne get you a quine, 
ke minister ke tu yenge brokon tieng bai a ji yen pande na kuma ke mi hoja rebi a vi ede ka je lo mane be be ko be ke jo bai be ko lu e makta bai a ji enum ta be ko yo no ko be be lu na wanan ko lazim be ke diang lu position a ji ke created director general directors a good office manager a good je nyir be ate de chai ka je enum ta be ko yo no ka tem be lo bla nem na nge ma de en toke uziri a de bla ting a le ting ku bi was right ka bi ku ting ra ne ben to was right a ja me tong tok a ci ri ke bo pa an tok ku ka ci ke gorni nepsu gagare ka ka ci ne ke gorni me ben ku ke tong tong ga ji am ke tin ka je mena se ti ka ra e ke ne ye ne ngo ka lo le ka lo le mena se ya ma ye ye eh ku ka ci ya ne to ke lo ye a lo ra ne ben was ra ko ko ben a lo ke ku ye ne de la zin ba nyin dil ti de ko ke e bo ko ke ba ga lo ye ka mena se a je be ga ka be tem be la was ra de page bla ting ka le you ke the same ko wa ri you was ra to it nga ji be you was ra ke ne eh ko ta ci ke kwan ku ka ci e because nga ji lo way o wa a ji pi wala wala non qualification alew e just t b ke tin ku nga ngi ke so now ko wan e lo le ba ya be lo ke pa na win new sudan pa na win be sharp be be yen pi ri pi be ba be ba ye tweng a ji lew ci twar way ko ko ci ben rana ben nom e rana ben bro miyoch rana ben bro gam ko ke to ko ni meta aye ko yo chir ke cpa a ci bitiam aye yo ke yen man ci garang to be chir ba gri me na be twar way ko to nga bro ko ja bo du tong so nga e ro yo ko le madam ba ti da bo ko be ko du bo ko be du tong ga na ke na ngang ko ki wan ci ngong ro ke ka lo e am ro del miyoch so ke jero lo e ten ruai ye no ko lu o ye ruai ye nga jetiam ku junu ba sudan a ci week a ci ya bang ba ko nga ke ba ga lu o ye jetiam ka ka ke nang tier ku ja ba junu sudan ye tweng ke la dong ge zero a nga ke jero lo e ku nga de ke na ba ke na ye gal ten so en ge ye we ba en ge ke jero lo this is what is uh, this is what we have uh, we, we have discover uh my people Uh, this is what uh, what has happened this is what tim edward is telling us uh, all of these things that we are we are reading in this book are things that we have observed all of us know the truth so no matter how much people may want to uh, lie about it they don't want to discuss it uh, that is uh, totally fine uh, but all of us who know the truth we know what it is uh, what allowed country here to fail is the nation is the notion of nepotism and the place where this nepotism was highest was office of the president even now go to the office of the president and see who is working there is the same mark aside from bakasoro who was recently appointed as minister and a few other individual almost everyone that you find there is from werap and not just from werap anywhere in werap from rake you will find them there you find people from the village directly there because they are relatives uh, this is what is being practiced so the highest office in the land is what set the direction you know and the direction that was set of the so called government our government our way was a government of corruption and government of nepotism the idea of giving south sudan a chance so that it may become a better country so that it may become the country for which our martyrs sacrificed their lives was thrown out and uh, the vision was lost immediately everyone became about amassing as much wealth as possible and here is not just only president kiri is doing it all everyone is doing it the ministers are doing it the generals are doing it uh, but president kiri is the president and he's the one that set the tone and the tone he set is take as much as you want and that is what happened so uh, this is the summary of the book we have gone through it from the beginning what they call the final solution which was the massacre of people that were identified as enemies of the regime and because riak machar was the most vocal opposition to salvakir nuer people were identified as uh, the enemy uh, a tribal army was recruited mostly from werap and from northern bargazal trained by paul malonga one they were armed and they were pumped up by bola kut told now you have to prove yourself by being brutal and by killing your enemies go door to door kill them all and they did they went door to door they killed men they killed women they killed children they turned the south sudan apart they broke the social fabric of the nation and then we go to through the plan how they actually did it which is disgusting they massacre everyone 
And then we begin to understand how did this happen. We realized that SPLM had had some institutional issues uh, from the very beginning. There was no systems that were built in. And this allows al Bakir when he came in, to basically pick it and then put in his loyalists, appoint people that he wants, and then with this notion of our government our way. We, ha we have also been introduced a bit about who Salva Kiir is. What is his character? He's a guy that is very simple, he's mentioned as simple, but he's a guy that likes his alcohol, uh, especially beer. Uh, he likes his whiskey. Uh, it, we talk about that. He likes playing cards, uh, you know, Arbatasher. This is his favorite game. Uh, there is a talk about how he likes young women. And we are told about a young girl that was in the choir. It's the same thing we will hear later on at the St. Uh, Teresa Cathedral as we go through the book. And we're going, we'll be going through the book over and over again. Uh, it's the same thing that we will, we will hear, uh, where he managed to pursue that young girl and got her pregnant. And we are told from the book that, this, that she will not be the last. She's just the beginning of Salva uh, uh sex maniacism. Uh, this is some of the things that we will go through uh, throughout. So here, the notion of building an independent new nation that will be strong, that will be proud, where justice, liberty, and prosperity shall forever reign, it was thrown out of the window from day one with the death of John Grant. And here, what began was looting, nepotism, and all manner of evil and corruption and bankruptcy, bankruptcy of morals, bankruptcy of ideas. This is basically what South Sudan was subjected to. Uh, so we will leave it there. We'll come next week and pick it up. Uh, not next week, I mean over the weekend on Saturday. Uh, we'll pick it up uh, from chapter 7 to chapter 12. Uh, and then we will go through those chapters. So I encourage those of you who have the book, read those chapters. Go through it. Mark them. Be prepared. Uh, in, your, in your comments, I will go and read uh, your comment, all of them, I will read through them uh, later. Uh, and then if you have uh, some uh, advice, ideas, pointers, issues to emphasize, you write them. But I encourage you, all of you, to share the video. So, Ian, webai, would you bend the Taban, would you through the book, a chukugal, minne kubun e chol solution akir, solution akir, e ye chan be koyo wane yeke yoke ke luiki ropos, yi riak machari, nyandeng, yi pagana mum, beke lum ku matke. Supporters can German especially now require on Chinwara, but define the enemy. Get a recruited. Jenya Jebeke, Muslim, it can wear up, one only where they can will. Chimalunga one can pure to three, pan teat, a chicken bay, who bogum moika genadang, Jacob Lenim, good big alloy, well awake, working Thor one. Man, a Jebeke Sadun, Baka Jo Thor, Kuba enemy, the enemy here a jetifying gay and wear, Baka napping, Queen like a chicken alloy, a jibolo. Ala one, Lego one, Lego one age, Lego one age, Lego corner, Binwer began up when you juba. A cookay and get your law in a jug, loquen a book of your detail. A joy you, a little roddy, Yinga, I take a mention ten, a cheer long dear by Joe by our woman, by Joe by Allah Queen along. What you can lay at them, you much walk in a low road, Tony Garangar and Jato, what can a kuma shakalu, which you told you go to go on now. A kakire jo ben, could you kuma de loy? Uh, could you akuma da a bugle way dull day? Uh, get a chene, a chena kuma, a chene jol way than whereby. So, get your loika, uh, what you can lay? Akuma can it be akuma yendi, Jacuma winning a ben, can a coil why can a yen, coil a gabilla den, coil a pan den, who get tell keg akuma, uh, could lay twenty. Uh, so, in get a general way than whereby, uh, in get in get a general loy. So, Kakaba will tene, uh, when we goodbye. Uh, walk, uh, walk a twang one a canna, Coboco Quanchuk. What you can lay at her and a choky ran yendi. Jelluil, Monday, a chuck walk, gola lay walk, near beer, near whiskey, a good day, near with polo wet, with your polo wet. Cook a locanesa. I look an essay in a Catholic, Minto in a yay locanesa. Cook a jolo, a yellow canesa, look at your union will will, your die, and yan tung to go a lock with ten, and yan lay a dunger choir, the Sunday school, a yaket. Gonyar, Quenchuk, Ku Tutkide, Kuliech, Quajola, Wolokache, and Biaker, in Yerichalia, a good. So, a young Kayaka, young Kay long and Chuku cover near cooler, a chapter one of good chapter six, Ngachuku, 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 a chug did it took, a good chug did the temp, Ngachuku Queen, Niyo Masebet, a book of Joba, a gold chug did the row, a good chug did it here grow. 
ka wek la kwen ke buk ngo ta ban buk ware je tong mon jang ti man wan chanel wel ko buk ware je tong nuer a buk ware all the different languages so kene lo ro ka ko pia biran ben ngi chiran be ay gam yo ngene ka lwel a lwel ke nga de ngol we ben ba la tweng a chan kan kara ku ko lo yo kum ke ne pe a ko wan ke nong ngi tiel ko ko wan ke nong ngi gur so ko ya jam chan be ke ngi a ka jero lo ko buk ro pa la we ken a go ba ya go la tweng so we mi go ba we ta galech na ye ma to grab wala ye ma na ba video lu yi chier lo yi video du na ko ya ka peng lu yi jam ke cha ke jam yen ke yen we ku so shukron we ko jam ke la ke tweng jam ke ta wali a ka ka ba ka ba ya ke di ya da ku we ket ke ti man ya ket a na ba ke de da so yen la ke tweng ku yi ra na ben lu yi encourage ba voice du ba cha peng a ko ba lu yi comment ki lu yi comment a yen so my people share the video whether you are matograph you are a true patriot it doesn't matter share the video make your own video uh, if you want to come and uh, attack me you are welcome you have a right to do that uh, if you want to come and also add your voice into what we are doing you are welcome to do that we want a conversation is the only way our nation will move forward thank you and i look forward to seeing you on saturday Ga 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 